Okay. Um, someone told me that, uh, uh, Brian Dellinger has put me in a thumbnail, my face. Uh, um, okay, so I'll just see what he says in this video, then that video, that video. Okay, here we go, my commentary on Brian Dellinger. Okay, now I click play. I haven't liked it or unliked it. I haven't done anything yet. <laughs> I'm going to start a series of videos called Common Sayings of Lost People and how to answer them from the scriptures. Okay? This is the first one. Something that you're going to hear from almost every lost person that you deal with, they'll say, Who are you to judge me? I'm going to be just reading the scriptures. I'm going to put them up on screen here for you. First Corinthians chapter 2, verses 14 and 15 said, Brian! Before you say the scriptures, right, you deny that Jesus is, is the Son, you say that he is God the Father, so that's a lie, right? I believe you're lost, Brian. I don't know about these other people, I don't know, but I believe I'm saved because I believe, I trust in him as my Saviour, I accept the free gift. Right? It's a free gift. So we're not doing works for salvation. Sure, we should live right, but we're not, we're not working for salvation. You seem to be wanting that. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. See? So See, you're the fool, Brian, because cause you say that Jesus is God the Father when he's clearly the Son, Brian Denlinger. And I was giving you space, right? And you had to do some videos and, and, and have me in the thumbnail. Now I'm not going to give you space now, Brian, right? You can blame yourself for this now. I'm not going to let up on you, Brian Denlinger. Show somebody that scripture. There's two scriptures there. And verses, I'm saying. You show them and you say, okay, I'm spiritual. I'm saved. I'm born again. And when I'm judging you, so you don't understand. I believe you're not born again because you're against the blood atonement of Jesus, Brian Denlinger. understand a lot of the things of the Spirit of God. The things, things were given to us from the King James Bible um, because you're not saved. But when you get saved, then you're going to understand things better. But me, I'm in a position where I am supposed to judge. And my judgment that God gives to me is actually to help you improve your life. John chapter 7, verse 24. Judge not according to the appearance, but judge righteous judgment. Again, it's a command. We are supposed to judge righteous judgment. But... Something that you have n most of these people you don't know how they live. So how how I don't know how you live, Brian. I wouldn't have a clue. Right? I'm in Australia. You're in Maine in the USA, Brian Denlinger. What you have to keep in mind as a Christian is judging not according to the appearance. Sometimes it's good to kind of remember what you used to look like back when you were lost. Okay? Um, a lot of you out there that are lost, you look at me and you think, oh, he's just a, you know, one of these Christians, a little goody two-shoe, whatever else. Uh, it wasn't the past. I came to the end of myself. The and Brian so did there. I for over 20 uh, years, Brian Denlinger. You wouldn't have thought that I was a Christian. Right? That's why I believe you are lost, Brian Denling. I personally believe you are lost, Brian. I'm not lost because I believe. I have my faith in Jesus. 
and I'm trusting in him alone. I'm not trusting in my asking anymore, right? And I believe he is God in the flesh and he's God's son. Where, where you deny that he is the son. So I have an issue with you there, Brian Denlinger. Okay. And um, I'm not letting up on you remember, now. What, what you were before you got saved, saved so you can have some grace for those people now. Um, but uh, we do have a right to judge people. In fact, we are commanded to judge people as Christians. Why? Because we have an absolute standard of truth. And you need to tell people that. It isn't about me. It's not about my religious denomination or feelings or preferences. It's this book. Okay? This is how we judge right here. My opinions your and your opinions don't matter. Salvationist. The Bible. So that was the first video. So we go back in, into there. Then we go into videos. Next one, because I haven't seen this, but, uh, okay, I haven't played this video, guys, uh, so this will be the first time. The image of me. I don't wear suits like that. Common sayings of lost people. Number two, let him that is without sin cast the first stone. Have you ever heard a lost person say that? I have. I remember a while back this uh, Mario Brisson or whatever his name was, this vigilant Christian here on uh, the internet. He got caught literally with his pants down, you know, with his pants off actually. And uh, he's a pervert, sex pervert. Right, okay, okay. So, so that's between him and the Lord. Brian Denlinger, if he's truly saved, he's saved, right? Now, when he behaves like that, he's disappointing the Lord, right? Wanting to be involved in group sex of sodomy and all sorts of stuff. I'm and not interested in sodomy. And people are saying, you're fake, you're a fraud, you need to get off YouTube. And he said, hey, let him that's without sin cast the first stone. That and calling people Pharisees, which we'll be getting to that in another one of these Common things of lost people, uh, little short stuff. Um, what what I say is, we all have our faults. We don't know how you live. No one knows. Only your wife, right? I don't know how your wife lives, and I don't know how you live. You, your little boy is only a little child, right? So. I don't know how other people live, so I don't know. You don't know how I live. You absolutely don't know anything about me, Brian Denlinger. And I'll keep it that way. Please. But, but another one that, that did it was Ken Hoven. Ken Hoven divorced his first wife, married this uh, blonde woman, this uh, Mary Toko. It's none of my business about third wife. He Ken Hoven her and Hoven married again. Brian Denlinger. You know about that. But, but he, he said, said his uh, video defending, defending what he was doing, he said, hey, let him that's without sin cast the first stone. Uh, very, very typical of lost people. They'll try to say, hey, yes, you... But how do you know if Ken Hoven's lost? You don't. You don't, Brian. You are not Jesus. You don't know who the names of, of, of the lambs... While, while I believe you are lost, I don't know for certain, but... The way you were behaving, I believe you are, right? You're against the blood of time and of Jesus, right? So, so you're self-righteous, Brian Denlinger? You caught me red-handed in sin, but um, you can't judge me unless you are sinless. That's really what they're trying to say. Well, Only the Jesus is sinless. Let's actually look at what the story is all about and what's going on. John chapter 8, verse 1 Jesus went unto the Mount of Olives, and early in the morning he came again into the temple, and all the people came unto him, and he sat down and taught them. And the scribes and Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery, and when they had set her in the midst, they say unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. Now Moses and the law commanded us that such 
should be stoned, but what sayest thou? See, they realize that Jesus Christ is coming to fulfill the law. There, he's claiming these things. He's healing people and whatever else on the Sabbath day, which would make him angry. Which is fine. Um, and uh, he comes in. Jesus and, has a right to heal people on the Sabbath day, which is fine what Jesus did. He's doing all this nice stuff. People are, are magnifying his name, and they say, oh, let's just get this woman here, and, and then we can you know, put her to death, essentially. And then people say, oh, Jesus wasn't such a nice guy after all. We'll see how Jesus handles this here in a moment. But first, we're going to go back to this passage of Scripture that they're talking about, Moses and the law. Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 22 says, if a man be found lying with a woman married to a husband, then they shall... Speaking about marriage, Brian Dellinger, you and Catherine are not legally married, right? Okay? Not a proper m marriage. Both of them die. Hmm. Both the man that lay with the woman and the woman, so shalt thou put away evil from Israel. Did they bring the man and the woman that were in this adulterous act? No, no, they, they only brought, brought the woman. woman. Hmm. Had a little, little problem there. there. Violating the law, you know. They, they weren't, weren't really following the law of Moses. John chapter 8, verse 6. Let's go back to the story, back, back to the text here. here. This they said, tempting him, that they might have to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down, and with his finger wrote right on the ground, as though he heard him not. That. So, so when they continued asking, asking him, he lifted up himself and said unto them, he that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. There you have the saying that lost people will take. Hmm. Well, I don't say that. Verse, John chapter 8, verse 8. And again he stooped down and wrote on the ground. And they which heard it, being convicted by their own conscience, went out one by one, beginning at the eldest, even unto the last. And Jesus was left alone, and the woman standing in the midst. Hmm. Um, hmm. Now, the Bible doesn't say what Jesus was writing on the ground with his finger. I don't think he was just there scribbling, doodling, just, uh, you know. No, I think he either wrote Deuteronomy 22, verse 22, or perhaps, where's the man, or whatever. You know? And why were they, why were they convicted? Um, because he just proved in front of all the people, you're not really following the law of Moses. Mm -hmm. They were violating the law that they supposedly were there to uphold. Very interesting. But, but you see, that's usually where lost people will stop. They'll say, see, look at that. They all went out because nobody could judge them. And so you shouldn't be judging me either until you're without sin. You see? See? Open and shut case. Let's move on. Uh, Jesus. Jesus is the only judge, Brian. Right? You should just teach the gospel. And that's a... See, now I call upon the Lord, Brian Denlinger. As a saved person, regular, okay? And I believe I am saved, not because of my works. The works don't save me or keep me saved. See, that's why you're a phony, Denlinger. Uh, 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 uh. No, let's, let's keep, keep reading. reading. John chapter 8, verse 10. You're still a phony. When Jesus had lifted up himself and saw none but the woman, he said unto her, Woman, where are those thine accusers? Hath no man condemned thee? She said, No man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee for what she's doing there. But look what he says to her. Go and sin no more. Hmm. Hmm. But Jesus hadn't died on the cross yet. See, we're not saved by works. But but Jesus wants us to not sin if possible, right? He does want us to live right for him. I think it would be interesting next time you run into one of these people that says, hey, let him that's without sin cast the first stone, you say, okay, um, go and sin no more. What? What? Huh? That's what... You can't stop singing, sinning, Brian Denlinger. I know I've caught you uh, telling lies. It doesn't matter. Sin is sin. And no one can, while they're in this body, 
in their own flesh bodies, we all will be sinners, continue, until we die. Right? The, the passage is about, about there, go and sin no more. Jesus let her off from the punishment that she justly deserved there. There's some typology for New Testament Christianity, which comes later after you know, Jesus dies on the cross. That's there. But what about the thing of going sin no more? Holy, righteous living. Hey, uh, uh, Ken Hoven, um, you want to use that little argument there, uh, the hymn that's without sin? Cast the first stone, okay? And you said he's lost. We don't know that. I don't even know Ken H H Hoven never met him. He might be lost. He might not. See? But if he's trusting in Jesus as his personal saviour, right? A and he's got his faith in what Jesus did for him on the cross, including the blood of time, and he is saved. You are against the blood of Jesus, Brian Dellinger, and I'm calling you out. Go, Go and, and sin no more. more. Oh, you didn't, didn't make it. it. Uh, you divorced your second wife. Now you're, you're on your third. third. Hey, uh, Vigilant Christian. Christian. Um, and you're not even no married, Brian. You're not even that. legally married. Uh, let him without sin. sin. Cast, Cast the first stone. Okay, go and sin no more. Okay, Denlinger, you go and sin no more. You hypocrite. You got to be careful taking uh, verses out of context. You know what I mean? It just uh, ends up making it worse. And how many times do you the, take it uh, out of came there? Uh, uh, out of context, the Pharisees are actually the people, people that add their traditions and their feelings to the text of Scripture. Right, okay. So that's the second one. See, I've been busy doing other things and not making uh, many vi videos. I'm, I'm sorry about that. Um, okay. I haven't liked or disliked. I haven't seen this video. Um. Common sayings of lost people. Number three. One of my favorite ones. Judge not, lest ye be judged. You just listen to Metallica. I don't say that either. Um, teenager, and they had a song called Holier Than Thou, and I remember they sang, Judge not, lest ye be judged yourself, you know, and, and, uh, and it's so funny, because when you actually read the Bible, the Bible doesn't even say that. King James Bible, I won't speak for the other ones that come from the Vatican, the ESV, the NIV, the NASV, all that garbage. We're talking about the King James Bible, King James Bible believers here. Let's actually go to the text. Matthew chapter 7, verse 1. Judge not that ye be not judged. It doesn't say lest ye be judged. All right? So one of my favorite things to do when you get one of these people and they come and they say, hey, judge not lest ye be judged. Just play stupid and just say, the Bible says that? Um, Brian, do you know how Jeremy uh, Carter lives? Probably not. Only Jeremy... Jeremy Carr and his wife knows? Do you know how any of your subscribers live? You don't? I don't? Right? So I don't accuse them of I don't know how they live. It's none of my business. But they should live right to please the Lord. I do agree with that in saying that you say, if you sin, you're lost. Um, Jesus says to these uh, people when they ask him, how must I be saved? He says to believe. See, and Ed, Ed Finney has got the gospel right. You don't, Denlinger, and I'm not letting up on you now, you scumbag. I wasn't aware of that. Uh, where, does it, where does it say that? Can you show me where that verse is, please? And they'll stumble around. Well, I'm not really sure. When, you know, it's, it's in there. I know it's in there because I I heard it and and it's it's. You say um, 
I'm not sure where it is. Could you, I mean, please enlighten me. Please. I mean, tell me where to judge not unless you be judged. Um, show me where it's at. And when they stumble all over themselves or whatever. Well, I'm sorry. I don't really know. Just say, let me show you. Matthew chapter 7. Okay? Judge not that ye be not judged. Why? Verse 2. For with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. And with what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you again. And why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye, but considerest not the beam that is in thine own eye? Or how wilt thou say to thy brother, Let me pull out the mote out of thine own eye, or out of thine eye, and behold, a beam is in thine own eye? Notice, by the way, in context, it's talking about judging brethren. Um, where does the Bible say that we're not supposed to judge lost people? I mean, who else is going to judge them? Uh, should we wait on other lost people to judge lost people? Um, no. If you're saved, if you're born again, you have to judge the lost people. You have to tell them that they are sick and need in, in need of a cure. You're a sinner. You're sick. We are this all sin sinners, Brian. Sick in God's saved or lost sinners. The cure is Jesus Christ. Jesus is oh, the only oh, way to heaven. The lost people after the Muslims or something like that. And Jesus is the Son, not the Father, Brian. Right? You think I'm lost because I disagree with you. You are not the standard, Brian Denlinger. Uh, no, they don't have the cure. You know? Crazy. But let's talk about this, okay? Let's see what, the, how, what this whole passage is really about. It's about hypocritical judgment. Okay, that's what it's talking about. Matthew chapter 7, verse 5. Thou hypocrite. Look at this. First cast out the beam out of thine own eye, and then shalt thou see clearly to cast out the moat out of thy brother's eye. Hmm. So, number one, it's talking about judging between brethren, saved people. But secondly, it's saying, it's not saying you cannot judge. It's saying don't be a hypocrite and judge somebody else. Don't come down on some brother who's, who's messing around and, and, you know, committed adultery or something like that when you yourself are a porn addict. You know what I mean? Don't come down on some guy that's uh, having a, you know, got drunk one night or whatever else when you yourself get drunk a little bit. On and on and on. Uh, don't come down on somebody for coveting some thing that you wouldn't covet, but yet you covet something else. Uh, that's what it's saying in the text there. That's what it's about. Hypocritical judgment. Don't be a hypocrite when you judge. First get victory over the sin in your life, and then you can see clearly to say, hey, I was a pornography addict. And I was. Okay, I've done a lot of studies on this thing and how to get out of porn addiction. But how can I tell somebody to get out of porn addiction when I myself am still looking at it? See? But when the Lord helps me to get out of that addiction, and now I can see clearly... Now I can say, hey, brother, here's what you need to do. Hey, sister, here's what you need to do. We're, we're only going by what? We're only going by what you say. I have no idea. You may have been, uh, may have uh, stopped watching porn. If you, you have stopped, good on you, Brian. But I've got no way of knowing and I don't trust you, what you say, because... You say that Jesus is the Father and I can't trust the word you say, Brian Denlinger. Somebody that's an alcoholic, they, they get away from it, they get victory over that sin. Now they can see clearly to tell somebody else, to counsel somebody else. That's what the passage is about. It has nothing to do with judging lost people. Nothing at all. Matthew chapter 7, verse 6, another very important verse with this whole thing. Give not that which is holy unto the dogs, neither cast ye your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet, and turn again and rend you. What a terrible thing. Oh, Brian Denlinger is such a sarcastic guy. He, he, he turns more lost people away than he saves. Nonsense. People know so much about me. They know more about me than I know about myself. It's funny. But the, oh, he's so sarcastic. What do you think about Jesus Christ right there calling lost people dogs and swine? Jesus, gentle, meek, mild, happy, smiling Jesus. Uh, you're a dog. You're a swine. Hmm. And you get mad at me. 
Sure. sure. So, so what I'm saying is Matthew chapter 7 verses 1 through 5 is about judging between brethren. Verse 6 it goes in and says, Give not that which is holy unto dogs, you know, and swine, basically, talking about lost people. Luke chapter 6 verse 37 and 38. Judge not, and ye shall not be judged. Condemn not, and ye shall not be condemned. Forgive, and ye shall be forgiven. Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, and shaken together, and running over, shall men give into your bosom. For with the same measure that ye meet, with all, it shall be measured to you again. Yeah. If you're kicking somebody, and you yourself have the same problem, it's going to be a problem. But you know what? The reverse of it is, when you finally get victory over that sin, and now that beams out of your eye, you know, beams out of your eye, you can see clearly to, to take out the moat out of your brother's eye, Guess what? It's a great blessing to help people get out of the sin that you yourself used to struggle with. That's what the passage is about. It has nothing to do with judging lost people. Right. Okay. Thank you.